Hello friends, in this presentation, we will discuss the basic principles of port placement. By following these principles, we will be able to do our laparoscopic surgery in a well coordinated manner. The tissue organ manipulation, tying of knots will be easier. There will be no clashing of instrument inside the abdomen. Even the level of exhaustion we feel at the end of surgery will be less. These principles is based on understanding the knowledge of levers and angle. We have studied about lever in our physics classes in our childhood. There are three types of lever. Each lever has three points. Supporting point known as fulcrum and the two ends where the effort and load is located. It is the position of the fulcrum with relation to the load and effort which determines the type of lever. In laparoscopy, we follow the principle of type 1 lever. Classic example is the balance or taraju we see at the merchant shop, where the effort and load arm is equally distant from the fulcrum. In laparoscopy, the fulcrum is the abdominal wall and the effort arm is the end, the handle where we hold the laparoscopic instruments and the load arm is a non-insulated end used to hold the tissue organ or needle inside the abdomen depending on the type of instruments we are using. In following this principle, we have to ensure that the length of the instrument inside and outside the abdomen must be nearly equal. We can appreciate the advantage of type 1 lever only after considering the disadvantage of other types of lever. This is type 2 lever where the fulcrum is very close to the load arm. In laparoscopy, let's take an example of operating a child of 10 years with a standard adult laparoscopy instrument. Usually the size of adult instrument is 36 cm. In this case, the length of the instrument outside will be more as compared to inside the abdomen. So whenever we move the instrument side to side outside, the inside movement will not be equal, but it will be rectified or reduced inside. Suppose we move 10 cm outside side to side with a Maryland, it will be 2 to 5 cm inside the abdomen. Secondly, the force applied at the hands of the Maryland will be magnified at the tip. Example, we apply a 5 Newton on the hand of the Maryland and trying to hold the bowel. The force at the tip will be more than 5 Newton and therefore the damage of tissues will be more because in pediatric cases the tissue is already fragile. Now let us consider the disadvantage of type 3 lever. In this type of lever, the fulcrum is close to the effort arm that is the handle. Classic example is operating on an obese patient with a standard adult laparoscopic instrument. Here the maximum length of the instrument will be inside the abdomen because the port is very far away from the target of dissection. Here a little side to side movement of our instrument outside will lead to the magnification of the movement inside the abdomen. Therefore, the movements are amplified inside. However, the force which we apply outside will be reduced inside. Suppose you apply a force of 10 Newton outside, inside the force will be 5 Newton. In laparoscopy, we should always follow the first law of lever, that is equal length of instruments outside inside the abdomen. It is only possible if we choose our lap instrument as per the age of the patient or the BMI or the body habitus of the patient. In laparoscopy, for practical purpose, there are three types of angles. Azimuth angle. This is the angle between the camera port and the working port and should ideally be 30 degree. But for practical purpose, it can vary between 15 to 45 degree. Manipulation angle. This is the angle between two working ports and should ideally be 60 degree. And third is the elevation angle. It is the angle between the working port and the horizontal surface of the operating table and should be ideally 30 to 60 degree. Now let us consider the practical application of angles in our daily routine laparoscopic surgery with reference to three types of lever. Now let's again consider the example of type 2 lever that is operating a child with a delt laparoscopic instrument where the inside length is less as compared to outside the body and the port is very close to the target of dissection. What will happen? The elevation angle will become 90 degree. Just imagine tossing a paratha or an omelette in a frying pan with a cooking stick at, a degree, at an angle of 90 degree to the frying pan. Not possible. You won't be able to toss it. You have to make an angle of 30 to 60 degree in order to toss the paratha or the omelette on the frying pan. Just understand the difficulty of manipulating the tissues inside the abdomen at a 90 degree or knotting in when you are trying a knot. A classic example of knitting is when the two sticks are placed at an angle of acute angle that is around 30 to 60 degrees. Let's again consider the example of type 3 lever where the maximum length of instrument is inside the abdomen compared to the outside that is the port is very far away from the target of dissection that is operating in obese patients with a standard laparoscopy instrument. In this case the handle of the instrument 
will touch the body of the patient or the edge of the operating table and we may not be able to do our surgery. Another drawback is if the port is very close to the target vitreous section that is type 2 lever, the working of the instrument which is the tip of the instrument inside the abdomen is uninsulated and this may touch the metallic cannula and can lead to direct coupling injury to the nearby bowel or bladder unknowingly. If the port is very far away from the target of dissection that is type 3 lever operating on an obese patient with a standard laparoscopy instrument, the entry and exit will not be witnessed by the telescope as cannula behind the telescope and long pathway of entry is blind and bowel damage can occur. So if we follow the type 1 principle that is half inside half outside in order to achieve these principles, we need to plan our ports very judiciously. We need to follow the baseball diamond concept. This concept is based on the pattern of port placement resembling the corners of baseball stadium. The stadium we see in the picture is a diamond shaped with well defined four corners marked by arrows. If you visualize the stadium in the picture, there are four corners. The corner which is close to us represents the target organ of dissection. The region between the outer and the inner area is the abdominal wall and extreme far away in between the arc is the primary or the camera port and the two corners on the sides marked with blue arrow is the secondary or the working port. This picture correlates very well with the baseball diamond concept and its application with respect to port placement. In the lower picture you can see the port placement for prosthetic surgery with the two ends of the baseball is formed by the target organ that is the prostate and the primary port or the camera port at the other end and the two working ports are seen on the side on the corner of the baseball diamond stadium concept. The diamond outline created by joining both our hands in this pattern helps us in making the port sides on the abdomen. The distance from the tip of the index finger to the anatomical snuff box as shown in the diagram is usually around 18 cm. The meeting point of both the index finger is the target site of surgical dissection. The meeting point of both the thumbs forms a camera port. The anatomical snuff box of both the hands forms the site for the secondary or the working port. To mark the respective ports on the abdomen, let's take we are planning to do a left nephrectomy. After creating the neoperitoneum, the site of the left renal pedicle is marked on the wall of the abdomen and the hand is placed in such a way that both the index finger is on the target site. The meeting point of the thumb becomes a camera port and both the anatomical snuff box becomes the secondary port. If somehow we are not sure about the target dissection point, we can introduce the camera port as we do in cases of nephrectomy and we introduce our telescope, touch the point target of dissection and move upwards till we see the light on the anterior abdominal wall. We mark this point on the anterior abdominal wall and thus we place our hand in this diamond concept in such a way that the tip of the index finger is located on the dissection point and thus both the secondary port or the working ports can be marked at the level of the anatomical snuff box. This is a small video presentation for port placement for left radical nephrectomy. Various needle institutes in, in the Palmer's point. Feel the click, there should be two clicks, followed by a free flow of the normal saline through the various needle into the intra-abdominal space. Initially, we maintain the pressure for 20 ml mercury. Later on, once the all ports are reduced, it is reduced to 15 mm mercury. Please check for the gradual rise in the abdominal pressure. Once the various needle is taken out, we do the surface marking. This is the lateral border rectus muscle. This is subcostal line. Uh, primary port is introduced in between the uh, cephis sternum and umbilicus on the lateral border of rectus muscles. This is the secondary port which is placed in midway in between anterior spine and the umbilicus. You can see the diamond shaped arrangement of the primary port, two lateral ports and the target.